Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. I'm Bill McMinn, pastor of Vigable Bible Church, along with Nobles Darby the Fourth. So appreciate it. Actually, Nobles came in and he spoke at the Conscious of Prayer breakfast this morning. So man, appreciated hearing your testimony. So I thought. Actually, Mark, our producer, said, hey, let's have Nobles come in. And just, hey, that, that's Mark, man. You're just yeah. standing around. He just, like, yanks you right in. Yeah, hey, right come in. on in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so. Yeah. No, I loved hearing your story, and I think other people would like hearing it, too. So Absolutely. Well, hey, Pastor, thanks for having me. It's an honor to uh, be on this podcast with you all just to really talk about what God has done. Um, I'll be the first to admit um, what I'm about to share is no testament to anything that I've done, but um, really to the glory of God. You know, I love where Paul talks about in Second Corinthians, um, you know, if we boast, we need to boast in the Lord. Right. Um, and so I give him all the credit for what I'm about to share. Um, but just to give a little bit of my background, um, so I grew up the son of a preacher, um, the oh, grandson cool. of a preacher. Uh, so, you know, faith and the Lord and, you know, things of that nature have always been present in my life. It was a foundation that was laid at an early age. But I also played in a lot of sports, you know, basketball, football, baseball. It was football ultimately that, you know, took me to college. And I was able to um, really come to a place where my faith had to be tested, I would say. Um, you know, because growing up in church, it was one of those experiences to where, okay, I'm here and I know I love God. Uh, but how do I really apply what I'm learning in a way that where it makes sense now that I'm out on my own? You know, right. I'm an adult. I'm beginning to learn about faith, you know, in new environments, new places. And ultimately, when I was away in college as a uh, freshman, um, prior to me leaving to go to school, my grandfather pulled me to the side and just told me, uh, son, you're going to need God to make it through college. I didn't know what he meant by that fully. But, you know, he was someone that I respected immensely. Um, I loved him as a second dad as well. And two year, two weeks into my freshman semester, he passed away unexpectedly. Uh, admittedly, I didn't know how to cope or deal with that pain. Um, I was suffering a lot on the inside. And because I didn't know, um, ultimately, I knew I could go to God, but it didn't feel like it in those moments. And so I turned to alcohol for the first time. And really, that opened me up to a world I never envisioned myself living in. Um, and so the full scholarship that I had, uh, the school that I was at wound up being almost taken away. And so I had to, you know, go through the whole appeal process, you know, let the admissions people know, uh, you know, I experienced a traumatic death. Um, but I had to go through a season and a process where I had to ask God to refine me, refocus me, reshape me, and really help me to lock back in in order to finish what I started. So as soon as I get back, on campus entering my sophomore year, uh, go to first party of the school year on campus. And really that began a downward spiral uh, that would ultimately lead to December of 2006, me getting kicked out of this university, suspended for a year, had a 1.06 GPA. Uh, I think I had all D's and F's and like one C and like <laughs> a super easy class that gave me that one in front of that, uh, that point zero. And it, it really just forced me to reckon with uh, who I was as an individual and who I know one my family had raised me to be but even more importantly who God called me to be and so there was a moment um, and I'll never forget it I was in my bathroom uh, I was just in a season of depression I was battling a lot of suicidal thoughts I had always been in great shape you know just playing a lot of different sports um, but I had just completely stopped working out eating terrible put on all this weight and I'm in the bathroom uh, looking at myself in the mirror tears streaming down my face uh, the wind and wind, the wind and rain was beating up on the bathroom window. And I remember, you know, as I'm crying, I'm looking at myself in the mirror, really disgusted at that point and who I allowed myself to become and who I'm looking at. But I remember, you know, my grandfather told me I would need God. And so in that moment, um, I heard his voice, you know, audibly. And it reminded me, OK, even though I've fallen and have hit rock bottom, I can still pray. Right. And ask God to help me. And that's exactly what I did. Um, I just asked God to forgive me. I told him, Lord, if you give me another opportunity to get this right, you know, I'll serve you, live for you the rest of my life, um, commit my life to do your will. And in that moment, you know, I felt as though God had given me another chance. The, the weight of the world literally felt like it came off my shoulders and the rain stopped uh, outside and the wind 
and the sunlight came beaming through the window. And it was almost like God smiled on me in that moment and let me know, son, I hear you. You know, kind of like that moment, I, I, I liken it to um, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus and, you know, um, the dove came down, right. the sun hit. It was just one of those. Not that I'm Jesus by any stretch of imagination, <laughs> but, it, you know, it just felt like God had really allowed me to experience his redemptive power right. in that moment. And so from there, um, you know, th- that opportunity to get it right, I re-enrolled at a community college, made the dean's list. So, you know, I'm back focused. I'm getting straight A's. I'm living back up to the potential I knew I could. I re-enrolled at a four-year uh, university, uh, got my degree, walked the stage. No more sports, though. Um, no more sports. Sports okay. was over, at least playing at that moment. Gotcha. Um, but, you know, I always felt called to sports ministry. Right. And so fast forward, you know, a few years later, um, you know, that was 2012 that I graduated, 2018. Uh, I came into an organization I work for now, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, uh, where we as an organization that's global leverage the platform of sport as a way to share the gospel. but not just sports ministry, I felt called to pro ministry specifically because I had visions and dreams of becoming a pro athlete. We had pro athletes in my family and I saw one, how tremendous of a platform they have, but also saw how devastating of a platform it was without the Lord. And so I wanted to see myself in a position where I would do pro sports ministry. And for um, the last few years, a couple of years, actually, um, I've been blessed enough to serve as co-chaplain for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And recently I was named co-chaplain for our Cleveland Browns. Um, And so now I'm directly using the testimony and the experiences God allowed me uh, to overcome for his glory so that I can testify and speak of his goodness when I'm in front of pro coaches and athletes and let them know as well, listen, there's no mistake that you can make um, according to Romans 8 that whatever separates you from the love of God. Right. And so, you know, I'm just thankful that God has me here sitting with you guys right. today uh, to share this testimony and really perfectly inspire hope to someone. Um, if you're listening to this and you feel as though you've hit rock bottom, Jesus is as close as the mention of his name and uh, he died to save your soul. Right. No, I agree with that 100%. Now, going back to that bathroom experience, you know, where you feel like you've hit rock bottom. Now, Hearing your testimony too earlier, mm-hmm. so you're in sports one year, you got reinstated into the scholarship program, so yeah. now you're coming into your sophomore year, right? Correct. In your sophomore year, then you kind of get the boot out of that scholarship program, so yeah. now you're home. How long were you home before you hit that? You know, so you're partying. Yeah. You, like like you mentioned, you were waking up at three and four in the afternoon. Yeah. I mean, yeah. alcohol had a huge hold of your life, would you say? Yeah, de- definitely. And admittedly, uh, I had never, like I said before, I had never drinking alcohol. So, um, you know, when you've never experienced something before, you don't know what you have the tolerance for right. either. Um, and so once that, you know, box was open, It was like, well, shoot, if I'm already doing it, I might as well, you know, continue to revisit this. But it was really just from I I was hurting. I was suffering. I was depressed, you know, and I I, admittedly I knew I could go to the Lord. But again, it was one of those things where it had to become real in that bathroom experience for me to really be broken. You know, where David talks about God creating me a clean heart, renew right. that right spirit within me. And so it was really about a, a two year process that I went through this because I came home 2006. It wasn't until 2008 that I right. re-enrolled at that community college. Right. So I went through almost a two year process of God breaking me, reshaping right. me, remolding me in his image and his likeness, oh. ultimately for me to experience his grace um, that I could get back in the race, right. so to speak. I bet your pastor dad had a few words to say too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, listen, you know, my dad was never much of a hellfire and brimstone preacher, but I definitely felt the wrath of God <laughs> as he was beating on that bedroom door, you know, yeah. telling me, son, you got to figure it out. Right. But, you know, I, one of the things that I love about my dad and if my grandfather was still here, he would have been the same way. Uh, the patience and the grace of a father, right? right? You know, I myself am a new dad of a beautiful soon-to-be five-month-old baby boy, Nobles Charles Darby V, who we affectionately call Cinco because he's number awesome. five. Uh, and this is cool because today is Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, so, it is, actually. Yeah, yeah. so, son, this this podcast is for you. Uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll hear this when you get a little older. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, being a dad myself, I've understood grace in ways that not being a father, you know, I couldn't understand. Right. In the same way that Christ looks at us while we're, quote-unquote, figuring our world out, 
he extends grace. He extends right. patience. Right. And that's exactly what my natural father did, just as my heavenly father. And I'm learning how to apply that same grace and patience as I am now a father. Right. And so, you know, without that patience and grace, um, I know I wouldn't have gotten back to where I needed right. to be. But he, he was so... You know, you know how it is. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a dad, and I had adult children, too. Not yeah. all of them were doing the right things. And so right. I know, like, you didn't say it every time, but you had to have, hey, here's how it is. Yeah. This is the way life is. So you're talking to him. You're praying for him. As a parent, you're yeah. praying for your kids. So you Absolutely. know your dad, your mom, your grandfather ahead of him yeah. before he was here. And who knows? He's probably praying for you in heaven, too. Absolutely. Just praying for you, lifting you up. And then finally, it dawns on you. You have that see the light moment of yeah. and and kind of like when the light is shining, it shows our darkness too. Yeah, because we're we're kind of revealed and exposed that yeah, yeah, you know we've been stupid. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm talking about for myself. Absolutely, there are times Absolutely. where I've been like, you're yeah. an idiot. Like what are you doing? <laughs> for man? sure, you know, I raise so, both my hands. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. so you realize and you feel bad. Like that's where the godly sorrow kicks in that Paul yeah. talks about in the Corinthians. You yeah. know, it's like not a worldly sorrow, I mean a godly sorrow. Yeah. And when it's a godly sorrow, you're changing your life. Sure. And that's what you saw. So. In that moment, mm -hmm. you you feel like, man, when it's raining, it's, you feel miserable. It's miserable yeah, outside. Absolutely. And you just realize, I need God. So you yeah. turn to God, and then, ba boom, man, sun shining. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel that God spoke to you in that moment then, that God just speaks to different people in different ways? Absolutely. Uh, I, I know without a shadow of a doubt, he spoke to me in that moment. And the thing that, you know, I would encourage anyone that's listening uh, to this podcast is to understand and identify God speaks to all of us in different ways. Right. And, you know, growing up, I used to think that, you know, I'd hear this audible voice. You know, we used to watch right. every Easter, um, the 10 commandments <laughs> with Charles Charlton Heston, Heston. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Charlton Heston. Yeah. And, you know, God was this audible right. voice, you know, Moses like this and that. Right. So I always thought like, well, that's how God's going to talk to me. <laughs> right. It wasn't until I got older that I realized, no, it's that still small, quiet voice. Right. But it has so much power and commands so much authority when it speaks to you. And so um, you just have to identify how does God speak to you? Like God really speaks to me. Like some of my um, true stories, some of my chapel messages that I share with our pro teams, God will literally speak to me while I'm just driving on the freeway. Right. Like he'll just drop a word in my spirit and just begin to, you know, uh, pour things into me. Now I will pull over, <laughs> right. you know, to the side, you know, to capture what God is saying. Um, but, you know, I knew I knew then, just as I know now, um, when God's voice is speaking to me because it's clear, uh, it's it's precise, and it really speaks to what I need, not what I want right. in that moment. You know, and we talked a little bit about that this morning here at the prayer breakfast. You know, there's a scripture in James that talks about, you know, God doesn't answer prayer according to our own lusts and our own desires. Right. Like God's not this genie that we can just rub and say, Lord, do this for me. But when we pray and ask things according to his will, like that's when we can clearly hear his voice right. and discern his plan for our lives. And so, you know, just as I heard God then, I hear him even more clearly now. Right. So now you God has opened up doors. So let's say you go back in 2008, you graduate what year then at that point? Uh, 2012. Okay, so 2012. So you went back, like you went through your freshman year, but then you went back and redid yeah. a bunch of Took stuff. Took me seven years to get a four-year degree, <laughs> I like to say. <laughs> you had to go through the school of hard knocks, man. Hey, you know absolutely. I mean? Hey, but seven is the number of completions. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, my, my, my finishing was 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 spiritual. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. No, it's a great thing. You know, sometimes God has to get hold of you. And you absolutely. just, you just some, some people... I, I'm convinced of it. Just have to learn the hard way. Uh, yeah. You you got you have grandpa telling you, you got dad, mom telling you, and you're right. like, no, I, I really need to learn the hard way. Like right. I need to get my tail end kicked, and then yeah. oh, okay, I get it now. Exactly. But you've learned your lesson. For See, sure. that's the thing, right? Yes, absolutely. I, I did, and you know, did it take that? I, I you know, I can look back now and say no. But you know, one of the things that I often share with people is I have no regrets as I look back at my right. life. Right. You know, there was a song that. Uh, our choir and our praise team used to sing um, How Would I Know it was the name of the song and it was just went through all these different attributes of God like how would I know if God's a healer if I've never been sick how would right. I know he's a provider and so for me how would I know that God is a redeemer of his people right. had I not gone through those right. experiences and right. so you know I, I, for me, I would say like, those are the lessons I needed to learn for God to become real right. in, in ways to me that I hadn't known him to be, you know, because again, you know, with the audience that I'm in front of on a daily basis, you know, now granted no sin is greater than the next, but also when you have these, uh, 
higher platforms, you have more access to things because right. of the amount of money that you make. You right. may feel as though what you're doing is more significant than someone else. But no, like at the end of the day, like whether it's a hard lesson like you share that right. has to be learned or, you know, even the simple things that we just can't get right. You know, God still died for all or sent his son to die for all those things. His grace right. is sufficient. That's what I love when he talks, tells Paul. Like that thorn in the flesh, like sometimes that's the school right. of hard knocks that you right. need. Like right. that thing that keeps you dependent on God right. to let you know, listen, don't be humble, you know, right. because I, I've literally given you this so that you rely upon me. Well, sin is deceitful. And one of the, we, we talked about that recently in a Bible study. It's like, you guys have got to realize, I mean, this stuff's deceitful. Yeah. And, and, and we can be deceived. Like Absolutely. we can get into something that we, like you had shared earlier. Like, yeah. It's not that you intend to do right. these things or get into it. Right. But it does get hold of your life. And yeah. then I love the fact that God still speaking to you, man. Like Absolutely. God, he never gave up on you. Yeah. He still, he knew his plans for you. Yeah. Right. And Absolutely. so he, he speaks to you at that moment. And then you see that yeah. his hand is there. Yeah. And I love that because mm-hmm. what I loved about the testimony too, is that God, Here's your prayers. Yep. And if you're in trouble right now, if you're going through a hard time right now, if you feel like you've hit the rock bottom, like right. you're just not happy with your direction, you feel like, right. man, I've really just gone yeah. on a path I shouldn't have gone. Yeah. God's still there and he can turn you around. And you're living proof of the fact that Absolutely. God turns lives around. Yeah. Because now you, you went from wanting to be a pro athlete. Mm-hmm. You get kicked out of school because your GPA. Right. Which GPA went down because of drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Absolutely. you hit you you hit rock bottom, but you go yeah. back and you graduate. Yeah. And today God's still using you in pro sports. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's using you with the Cavs and also semi pro because right. you're the chaplain of the Lake Erie Captains, right? Right, right. I did one season uh with the captains last year. So, you know, you know, uh, pro ministry at all levels but to your point and I love what you shared it really just reminds me of Philippians 1 6 right you know, being confident that he who began right. a good work and that's the thing that we can't lose sight of it's not us that began the work right because if it's us it's easy for us to walk away when right. things get hard right. but when we live in the reality that no it's God that called me to this even through mistakes you look at life so much differently yes. because you know all right if he's called me to this well I can be confident he's going to bring me to an expected end, right? right. He's going to help me to accomplish so long as I get back in line with his will. So, no. you know, I, I think that's the encouragement for all of us that if he started it, he's going to finish. Yeah. It's a huge encouragement. And one of the things that I've seen in ministry is you don't want to lose sight of your mission. Yeah. So for you, let's say you come in to sports and when you're a teenager, you want a platform because mm-hmm. you want to share Christ and this is your heart. Right. Granddad's a pastor, dad's a pastor. Mm-hmm. You have a heart for the Lord and you want to share that. You go into mm-hmm. college, granddad dies, kind of lose sight of that mission. Yeah. Like this is what I'm here. This is my purpose. Mm-hmm. God redirects you, reroutes you, despite yourself, right? right. I mean, a lot of times God reroutes yeah. us despite ourselves. <laughs> Absolutely. But as you continue on in ministry, one of my encouragements is, as you said, don't mm-hmm. lose sight of that mission, man. Yeah. Because it is the thing, I know as being a, a pastor mm-hmm. for yeah. decades at this point, the things that have kept me going is mission. It's like, Amen. Bill, I know it's a hard day. Yeah. And there are days you want to quit. There are days yeah. you want to throw in. I think anybody who's doing anything, yeah. there are days, man, when for real, you want to hang it up and just yeah. say, that's enough. Absolutely. <laughs> that, Ab- absolutely. That's enough of this. Yeah. And the thing that keeps you going is mission. Absolutely. Right. No, you know, I couldn't agree more. And our mission as an organization, just coming back to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, is to lead every coach and athlete into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and his church. One scripture that we often reference because we're a disciple making ministry, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And I love what Jesus says. Like he starts off by saying, listen, all I've been given all authority. Yep. So therefore go. Right. Like, I think that as believers, you move differently and operate differently when you know God's given you his authority. Right. Right. And so, you know, Again, as you shared, I, I wake up, um, you know, tired some days, you know, especially being a new father right. and the demands that come with having, you know, a soon to be five month old baby. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm reminded, OK, well, I can't be off like, I, you know, because if I'm off, there's someone that will not hear God's word because it's not about us. Right. Right. It's God working through us. But we have to remain available, yielded and willing vessels for his word to flow through us, because right. sometimes we're the Bible that. Some people may ever read. They may I not agree. pick up this physical Bible. Right. So if I'm a, if if I'm so into myself that day and I don't feel like it, you know, then 
I may be costing someone an opportunity to encounter Christ. Right. And so I believe that, you know, like you shared, Pastor, when we stay focused on mission, it keeps us focused on God, his assignment for our lives, and those he's called us to serve. Right. Yeah, I talked about it last week, actually, that I, which I didn't always think about this when I was on a work crew, Mm -hmm. but I was more part of the church than I was the work crew. Mm. And when I was growing up in my neighborhood and people were offering you drugs, people were offering you, you know, dirty movies. Hey, come watch these dirty movies. My dad. No, I was more part of the church than the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, I was part of the neighborhood, but I was always part of the church. And so you got to realize that, no, I mean, I'm part of the body of Christ. I'm God's people. Absolutely. And kind of living it that way. Like you said, that's a, that's the story sometimes that people need to see. And I appreciate, I'm sure you're on social media too. I do, man, I see some people do a great job with just being out there. I mean, they're just, they don't, they're not afraid to say, Hey, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. This is what's going on in life or for us. Hey, it was a national day of prayer today or absolutely. I heard the speaker today at church and just putting this idea in people's heads that, Hey, you know what? There's something more out there. Well, Hey, I I love what you just shared because you, you really uh, threw me to lob to use a basketball term. Um, You know, that my approach to ministry and life, um, it's my four R's, you know, one, I got to be righteous. You know, we have to live according to the word. We can't, hold others accountable to a standard that we ourselves aren't living up to second you got to be real you got to be transparent right you know one of the things that i often do is i leverage this testimony in order to say hey listen I've made mistakes, but God's grace is still sufficient. So I yep. want to be real about where I've been, but also real about where God has me now. Um, third, I'm going to be relatable. You know, I understand as a younger guy, you know, um, Paul says, we be all things to all men so that you might win some. So, right, right, I'm in these locker rooms. You know, I'm at these games. I'm, you know, on these college campuses. I don't have to compromise who I am as a believer in right. order to fit in. No, I can show up as my authentic self. Right. And I trust that the light of Christ is going to show shine so authentically through me it's going to be engaging uh to lead people to want to know man there's something different about that guy right. you know what is that and, right. then, and that's an opportunity to share christ and then last to be relevant you right. know there there's a way to still be culturally relevant without again compromising who you are but utilizing what's going on in culture and shifting it and pointing to god's word so at the end of the day you know that's my approach and that's my philosophy you know in order to keep the main thing the main thing i love it we'll put we'll put those r's out there when we yeah. come to the when we put the podcast up i'll make sure that we write those down but i yeah. agree 100 percent uh in my world i'm a photographer okay as well as uh, yeah pastor i don't do it as like i do it as a hobby thing sure. not as a money i do sell prints i do okay. have stuff hanging around out in restaurants okay in the area and stuff like that but um i've met a lot of people yeah they're doing a lot of hikers a lot of kayakers sure. a lot of sure. photographers i don't come right out and say hey by the way i'm a right. preacher <laughs> because i already yeah. know yeah. everyone's got their concept of what that looks like Absolutely. or what that is and Absolutely. they're gonna pin pigeonhole me somewhere yeah eventually like i'll be i was one guy I kayaked with him hiked mm-hmm. with him like six time out yeah what do you do man are you like a teacher or right, something i right. said well it rhymes with that yeah <laughs> there you go there you go but you know what they didn't yeah. care right like none of those we still all hang out there's another guy I said what do you do man you Absolutely. said you're working in your office what do you do i said okay you've right. met me a couple of times i'll tell you about it. he goes oh okay cool you know what i mean he still yeah. talks the same way still right. is the same way he i don't want these people changing yeah because i just want to know them for who they are I, so then as you get to know them yeah, i love it right they Hey, listen, you know, one of the things, um, so in FCA, we have a discipleship curriculum called E3, stands for Engage, Equip, Empower. So it's really a a series of uh, 12 pillars, four within each E that we teach on how to disciple. Well, one of the things about discipleship is before I can share the word with someone, like, man, let's break bread. Let me find out about you, your family, your background. You know, I don't want to just run up to someone and be like, hey, do you know Jesus? Like, that's going to be a quick turnoff. And so the best relationships um, from a disciple context are those that are life on life right, right? so I'm sharing my life experience you're right. sharing your life experience eventually it's going to lead us to a point like you shared hey what do you do now I can do that right. like with my social media to which you mentioned if you go on there you'll see obviously my love for the Lord because right. I leverage that platform but you also see my love for sneakers now admittedly <laughs> like I, <laughs> I'm a huge sneaker guy right. but it serves me well you know in those spaces because that's all the athletes talk right. about that's what they wear so you know what I call it pastor I call it Gentile bait right and so <laughs> you know because they're gonna they're, they're gonna see something this relatable right, right? right. you know be like oh man like you got those you got the new Jordans whatever 
the case may be. Now, now that we've met on a level playing field, like, all right, we're talking about shoes. I'm breaking down those right. barriers. Eventually, we're going to have meaning, more meaningful conversations. Well, well, can I just say something? I love, love, love the fact that you just used the word sneakers. Yeah. And you're from Ohio. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I love that because yeah. it's all tennis shoes. Where I come from in the East, uh-huh. it's always sneakers. You come out here, so I'm wearing yeah. the sneakers. <laughs> oh, are you sneaking around? Right. What are you doing? Like, they're making fun of me, you yeah, know, for yeah, using yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. you just oh, used no, the listen, word. Uh, sneakers, sneakers, I am a sneaker head. I, I love it, man. Sneaker head, yeah. I love so, it. No, we, as far as I'm concerned, it's a sneaker. It's not a tennis <laughs> shoe. I, I don't play tennis. So. Right, right. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with yeah, you. I'm like, I call them sneakers. Sneaker, so, like, I'm glad I met a fellow Ohioan oh, who also absolutely. uses the same word. Absolutely. So. <laughs> yes, sir. But no, I, I do agree. I think there's got to be a relevance and a relatability. You can't be yeah. so out there where everyone's like, I can't even connect with this person. Right. Like, there's no, we have no common yeah. ground. So I have one dude, he found out I was a minister or whatever. And so I was just talking to him online because he like raised me and sure. my chops pretty much every yeah. day. <laughs> and um, so I talked to him. I said, hey, listen, man. I said, when we go out kayak and I'm starting to put a kayak in, I said, anytime you want to jump in, I'll buy, I'll bring an extra kayak for you. Yeah. He goes, dude, I'm totally down, man. I'm <laughs> down. I'll come out yeah, yeah. with you. Because, again, he doesn't mind that because right. we've related on other levels. Right, we've already right. hiked together. We've already met and taken pictures together Absolutely. and just done stuff and explored different areas and For stuff sure. like that. So we're in contact. I mean, there's yeah. certain people, dude, I'm in contact with them pretty much every day. Yeah, yeah. Just the unchurched, you know, Absolutely. just out there. We're talking all the time. So, yeah, I think mm-hmm. you have to have that. But eventually, I'd love to see that program. You're talking about those four pillars. Yeah, yeah. Like, and what was that? Who did that again? So Who this together? is uh, through FCA, Fellowship FCA, of Christian okay. Athletes. Yeah, this is our E3 discipleship curriculum. Engage, equip, empower. Yeah, and it's online. Um, you know, fca.org. You can uh, slash E3. And it takes you right to our discipleship. No, curriculum. I'm going to check it out because I yeah. think of FCA, like a lot of these programs here, they're meeting with the kids in the school. I don't Absolutely. know if they're going through the E3 per se. No, they, they definitely are. They yeah. definitely are. And so our uh, Ashtabula County director, Ryan Neville, shout out my brother, Ryan, uh, leads all of our FCA ministry here, does a phenomenal Doing job. A great job. Yep. Yeah, discipleship is very active and prevalent in all the schools that FCA is in. Because at the end of the day, we want to help these young student athletes understand Hey, leverage your platform and influence to reach those that maybe we can't reach. Right. One thing, one thing that I learned early on, Pastor, is that it's a race to the heart of a kid or whoever gets their first wins. Right. And so through the platform of sports, we are able to get there first through things like E3, uh, through meeting kids in the youth basketball league, right. whatever the case may be, a local huddle in a school. So, yeah, it's, it's powerful. It's an important ministry. And, yeah. and a ministry we should be supporting as churches. Yeah. Like we should be supporting our FCAs Absolutely. and encouraging our FCAs and things like that. We just had a guy from uh, Athletes in Action. Okay. And he just spoke in our church and awesome. gave his, we support him as a missionary. He's down in the Dayton area and okay. he's oversees tons of different campuses and Absolutely. whatnot and the people that are there. But that's another, it's the same. Yeah. Same type, yeah. of, type of ministry. And we right? love AIA, sister organization of right. ours. Actually, if you go to their headquarters in Xenia, Ohio, there's a document that's like a covenant literally between FCA and AIA that were signed by, signed by our uh, presidents at the time. Good. So, yeah, I work with AIA people. And love crews them. in there, too. Crews in there as well. Right. Young Life, okay. you know, you name okay. it. So, you know, a lot of different uh, different parts, but all a part of the same body. Yep, I agree. Like yeah. you said today, we're all one in Christ. Absolutely. As you were speaking this morning, I picked yes, it up. Sir. I'm like, a uh, 100% yeah, yeah. agree with that. We Absolutely. are all one for sure. in Jesus Christ. No, I appreciate you coming in, man. I appreciate you sharing your testimony. Hey, this so, was fun. Thanks God, for having me on. Yeah, God bless. I want to say, a quick prayer for you for your ministry Let's you know as we close this time normally father we just uh pray uh for nobles and we just ask god that you would be blessing his ministry bless those young family you know how precious you know five month old son uh that's exciting he's getting to uh, use his platform and he's getting to speak to different athletes and be a testimony to them and i'm sure that's high school and college and pro and all kinds of different places where he speaks and shares like today and i pray that you just multiply his ministry and keep him going i pray if it's good can we pray for robert brooks too and and, uh, you know, a guy that we've had come out here and hear him, he's, he, hear him speak. I love that guy. I just pray you bless these ministries, Lord. Help them. And God will give you all the credit for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, thanks for coming hey, in. Uh, super, you. super appreciate, appreciate you. We appreciate it. you uh, tuning in. Uh, feel free to uh, share the show. And you guys have an awesome week.